Hi, this is Jack Westerman for ESCA.net here in Romania for DreamHack Cluj 2015. Joining me this time is the one and only bald eagle himself. It's Jason Moses O'Toole. Jason, good to see you, man. What's it like being back here for yet another major for you? Uh, it's awesome. The majors are, are something special. Uh, everyone from players to talent takes great pride in being, being at one of these majors. So uh, it's, it's awesome. Is this number two for you or number, number two? Number two. First one is Cologne. Not in oh, so okay. So not yep. including the Dubai Invitational, which was big, but not an official major. Right? Not an official major. And how's the jet lag tre treating you? Because I know you had a hell of a long flight getting over here. Right? Yeah, it was tough to begin with, but uh, after a couple of days of uh, staying up late, waking up early, drinking some beers, it's all settled down. All right. So this major's just as good as Cologne so far. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a blast. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about the group stage matches because it was uh, they've been played out from Wednesday until yesterday and there were some really interesting results, right? I don't think anybody expected Luminosity to beat Fnatic, for example, or, uh, well, Mouse Sports G2, they had a hell of a series as well. Yep. What's been the most surprising part of the group stage for you? Um, just the utter, uh, you know, Cloud9 going winless. Yeah. Was uh, surprising to me. They're not winless. They, I think they won. They won one game. Yeah. But just the like the the, the level of their losses was surprising. Uh, Luminosity beating Fnatic. That's a huge surprise as well. Yeah. Um, I was also surprisingly disappointed in Flipside's turnout. I thought they would do a little bit better or appear a little bit better uh, in their in their losses. So that was a bit upsetting. But um, overall, I think most of the group stage played out just as we thought it would. It's the same eight legendary teams from the last major. Right. Yeah, you did speak very highly of Flipside on Pop Flash before uh, flying out here, actually. So it's yeah, surprising they didn't make it through. Going into the uh, quarterfinals today, obviously we can't talk about Envy and Fnatic because they're playing now. Yep. But how do you expect this to play out? Who's most poised to kind of make it through to the finals from here? Who's been playing the best so far? TSM. Yeah. Uh, and even Envy. But uh, it's one of those things we mentioned before coming here and everyone kind of saw it, these top these four teams or these three teams TSM, Envy and Fnatic they all kind of beat each other yeah. so it all depended on the bracket draw uh, and then the wild card is Virtus Pro who can just beat anyone if they show up in that plow mode uh, so Fnatic losing to LG really screwed up the brackets now and they we're now in a situation where a bunch of people's tournament favorites uh, are in trouble getting knocked out map one just completed with Fnatic taking it so Envy's on the brink of elimination Do you think these two this would have been a likely final if they hadn't met up or, or maybe they could have only been a semi-final, right? But right. these two teams could possibly have made it all the way to the final, right? Um, I think uh, no. Well, this could have this if this match had been in the semi-final, I think uh, it could have turned out similarly. But TSM uh, would have beat Fnatic. I mean, that's kind of the thing. TSM beats Fnatic. Fnatic beats Envy. Envy beats TSM. Right. Okay. So it's that triangle of death. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it just all came down to that group draw, and yeah, Fnatic really, really messed it up. But it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. All right, next question is about North America, seeing as uh, we have to address the issue. Wonderful. <laughs> exactly. Wonderful. Um, I, I like to rub it in because, you know, the UK has no representation here, so yeah. well, apart from the casters. Yeah, the entire uh, analyst. Exactly. Yep. So I have, to, I have to rub it in a little bit. But the US team's not a great showing here in uh, Romania. Uh, once again, you know, you guys never play well at these, these major international events. What do these guys have to do, Cloud9, CLG, to kind of push through uh, and, and make it in these tournaments? Show up. I mean, we've talked about it on the desk. I think Thorne put it well. You just got to come in and you got to play Counter-Strike. Like, nothing matters. Um, we got to be at the point now where there's no more excuses. You know, these teams have been together. These rosters have been together. They've had plenty of time. They've had plenty of experience at big events. Um, you know, they have the backing with their organizations. It's time to just put up. Um, and that's what's kind of crazy is... You know, it's just kind of funny watching Luminosity do what they did when they were in Brazil on the world stage, you know, cause some upsets, uh, get some opportunities off that, move to North America where they have the same practice conditions as every other North American team, and they come into a major and they make top eight. And North Americans, are, the rest of the team are just struggling, so it's really, really disappointing. Everybody's been complaining about the hardware here in Cluj, you know, the laggy PCs, the monitors especially, but FNS from CLG was kind of really beaten up about it. He, you know, he said, we're just not used to this equipment. Um, is that a valid excuse for the North Americans when everybody's playing on the same hardware? I just said no more excuses. Like, we're done. Okay. Everyone's equal playing field, no more. Even hardware, all right. Yep. Uh, and what if, so we're coming up to January, so about a year since I Buy Power got banned, their uh, skin throwing thing. Um, if those guys were to come back into the North American scene, would that be a big upturn for you guys? Would you see perhaps, you know, doing a lot better in these tournaments if that team were to come back? Uh, swag would be a huge addition. 
Uh, that, that's the thing too. There's, you know, we mentioned it. I know with just the casters and the analysts and some private talks, it's just like there's no. And I think you actually even Thorne mentioned it last night after CLG got eliminated. There's no star players in North America. We have none. Mm, right. uh, Skadoodle's supposed to be one. Shroud's supposed to be one. Both of them were absent in their elimination the other day. Definitely, yeah. Um, he goes the one who we next look to, and he was absent in, in Liquid's elimination game, and he he admits that he had a bad game. Um, and it's just. Uh, you know, the star players, they're expected to show up. You look at guys like, it doesn't matter what the rest of your team is like. You look at guys like AZ, who dropped 60-some kills in two matches. His team lost both of them. But he's that star player who actually showed up to play, even even in losses. He has a ridiculous shock showed up to play, even when Titan lost on cash. Yeah. So we don't have those stars who do that. Um, so it's just, it's just a bummer. Is it time the North American teams got a world-class coach, excuse me, coach like Jason Moses O'Toole, for example? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no. Coaches, coaching is such a weird situation, and even, and even talking to some of the you know coaches who are here, you know James is here, yeah, um, uh, Starix for Navi, uh, and even Vugo's here for Fnatic, and it's one of those things where I feel like a lot of these coaches have more of like there's always that you know the hype coach who doesn't really do anything tactical. He's just there to try and make sure the, the mental aspect is good. Yeah. There's like the coach that's actually an analyst who does all the research, but like doesn't really apply it. He just hands it over to the in-game leader. Um, I think Vugo is one of the few actual coaches, but it's such a weird thing right now because, you know, Starks was saying last night, he, he has things he wants to implement, changes he wants to make a Navi, but he has no power to do so because you right. can't cut one of your players. Right. You can't find him. Um, and actually, Thorne brought up a really good point about coaching is in League of Legends in the Korean scene, their coaches have power because they have six players on their roster. One of them's a sub. Sure. So if one of their players is you know, acting up or not doing something that he wants, he just benches them because they, they have that sixth person in their roster. <laughs> <laughs> don't, they just, don't you just hate it when you get heckled by Semler? Semler of all people. <laughs> all right. What about uh, as a player? I know you prefer casting. You flirted with this idea, idea of coaching, but... Uh, you used to play Counter-Strike. You were on some of the best teams in North America back in the day. When you come to an event like this, don't you just get that kind of urge to get back involved? Yeah, but then I watch what my potential teammates do in the tournament, <laughs> and I just, I'm like, nope, casting is better. Right. I'm, I, when, I, when I made this transition, I, I told myself um, fully dedicated to casting and not even think about playing again uh, because I don't think you, I don't think you can. I don't think you can be torn between wanting to do one or the other. You just have to, you know, get in with one all the way. All right, Jason, I just have a couple more questions before I let you go and watch this second game. Uh, people have been talking a lot about majors, the fact that we've been having these events for like two years now, and the production value has gone through the roof, but prize money hasn't really moved. Is it time that we saw more investment in prize pots from Valve, DreamHack, these guys? Uh, I mean, I'd love it. I don't know. I can't really speak to that. I don't. I don't have any say in the prize pot. I don't know no. what, what they're looking at. But I, we would obviously love to see it. I think we have the, the base for it in terms of uh, the people playing the game, the fans of the game, uh, people showing up to these events, uh, the amount of Counter Strike that's in demand at the moment, uh, the, the level of playing that we have with these professional teams. So um, I think that would be absolutely awesome going into the next year. All right, and uh, as always, Valve are here at the Major. They're showing a lot of interest in the game, still pushing those almost weekly patches out, right? Yep. Um, how do you feel about the state of Counter-Strike right now? If you could change anything, what would it be? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. The hard part is changing one thing in Counter-Strike really messes with some other things. So it's, uh, it's really difficult to pinpoint one thing. I still think, I've uh, been very vocal, that I think the death cam needs to be changed. Um, to offer less time to dead players to pass on information. Mm. Um, I'd also, I, I mean, this might be like the older, the older 1.6 player. Me, these pistols are a little <laughs> bit outrageous. Um, I want to see, I want to see. Th and this is kind of tied in with those pistols. I want to see uh, the pistols nerfed a bit, and I want to see bonus money removed from SMGs. Uh, I don't. I, I think getting $600 for an SMG kill is outrageous. All right. Um, so yeah, that would be good. What about the Zeus? Love the Zeus. Yeah? Love it. But <laughs> that should be gone. All right, very last question. Are we going to be seeing you casting the finals tomorrow? Uh, no clue. We haven't, uh, we haven't seen that. And I, I mean, got a lot of good casters here. It doesn't really matter who's going to be casting the finals. Got a match later on today. And uh, I think, I, I mean, everyone knows and saw the talent lineup. Just awesome to be working with all these people. So, uh, you know, when you're at a major, you're working with, you know, awesome people. It really doesn't matter what you're doing.
All right, Jason, well, sounds good to me. I do hope we see you casting something tomorrow, semis or finals. Uh, do you want to do shout-outs, ESCA, friends, family? I know you don't have any sponsors, but <laughs> before we go. A lot of ad space, potential <laughs> sponsors. Could have your logo on camera. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just shout-out to ESCA for, uh, you know, getting me started all this. Shout-out to DreamHack as well, bringing me out to my first event. Um, major as well. Uh, and shout out to the people at Collusion of Poco who've been uh, absolutely amazing. Got to wander around the city a few days and everyone is absolutely so nice. Nice to be in the heart of Transylvania for Halloween. I had some Transylvanian cuisine. <laughs> yeah, it was called Dracula's Pork Chop and it was fantastic. Right, sounds interesting. I don't think I'll partake. <laughs> uh, Alright Jason, thank you very much. I'll let you get back to the game now. But uh, for everyone at ESCA.net, stay tuned for more coverage here in Romania.